Hello, Active Sage here on the Sage channel, and after an awfully long time away, we are finally returning to the Dead Space series in October, just barely, for the Dead Space 2 playthrough I promised so, so long ago. Yes, I'm finally going to go ahead and play through Dead Space 2, one of my favorite franchises, a franchise I absolutely adore. I'm a big fan of the Dead Space Marker, Altman be praised, in all of its, well, million little chunks that if you actually look around right now on the menu screen, you actually see there's chunks of it floating around. Ooh, and also some text right there. Maybe Editor Sage will translate that for you. Maybe leave it up to you yourself. In fact, if we were really caring about text, there's a bit more up there at the top left. Where are we right now? What is this menu screen? Unlike the first game, which was a bunch of blood and gunk and... Well, pretty cool in that way, but it's sort of odd and unsettling. This is odd and unsettling in its own way, in the fact that you're inside Isaac Clarke's mind, the main character of the first game. This is sort of the chunks of the marker that implanted themselves. If you don't know, the Dead Space markers have the power of, well, they want to propagate themselves, they want to make you worship them, they want to make more of themselves by sort of convincing you to do so. And part of the reason why people go insane is because they can't properly comprehend the marker signal. People who are intelligent can comprehend the marker signal if they're engineers or have the right kind of brain. That's why it sort of ends up in your head. You sort of get driven by it to make dozens of them, or at least more of them. It's a pretty awesome thing. Anyway, really quickly, I'm just going to do a double check here to make sure we got our audio turned to subtitles on. Had a little bit of trouble with the game today. Turns out uh, I have a 4K desktop. I switched to the 1080p mode and tried to launch the game at 1080p, and it kept crashing. Set it back to 4K, ran the game at 1080p, and it worked. Also, I just came back here. Any texts that we might see? Any interesting things hidden about? I don't think so. I think we're good to go. So, let's really quickly hop into our single player here. Ta-da! And a little bit more text up there. What in Altman's name does that say, I wonder? Alrighty. And uh, we'll go ahead, and we're going to do New Game. Now, I could do New Game Plus, or I could even Load Game, because I did play through this game about a year and a half, maybe two ago. Again, I've played through it a few times, but uh, originally on console. But we're going to go to a just completely new game, that way we don't have any of the extras and stuff. You can start a new game from cleared. Suits and weapons from your previous playthrough will be available in the first storage. So that kind of unbalances it. We're not going to do that. We're going to do New Game. Yeah, we're not going to do any of these insane things. We're just going to go ahead and... Hey, any text? Hey, any text? We're just going to go ahead and say normal. Because in theory, any game that has a normal difficulty, that means the story, the difficulty of enemies, everything is based around that normal difficulty. So if there's a hard to kill enemy, it in theory should have been hard to kill for the NPCs, for the people existing. If there's an easy to kill enemy, you get to yell at the NPC for dying to it. Anyway, let's go ahead. Accept normal difficulty. <laughs> Look familiar? Loading screen from the first one? Huh, jump coordinates? Back to... where was that? Isaac, are you there? Come in, Isaac! Oh, God. I'm so sorry, Isaac. Look at the time difference. Oh, I'll call you okay. back later. It's okay. How are you doing? Good. You're right, Isaac. The Ishmer is a great ship. I am so lucky to be serving aboard her. Well, enjoy it while it lasts. You know they're going to decommission her next year. Isaac. Thank you. For what? For just pushing me to do this. I mean, if it weren't for you, I never would have made it this far, because you made me stick with it. Well, just remember, I'm giving you up for six months so you can do this. You know what? We must be getting out of range there, Isaac. Isaac, can you hear me? Look, I'm going to call you back as soon as I can, okay? Isaac! Isaac! You were drifting away for a moment there, Mr. Clark. I believe you were telling me about your nightmares that you've been having. About your dead girlfriend. What was her name? Nicole. Nicole. I didn't want it to end like this. 
I really wanted to see you again. Just once. I loved you. I always loved you. Yes. Nicole Brennan. She was a senior medical officer stationed aboard a Planet Cracker class vessel. Ishimura. USG Ishimura, yes. Part of a mining operation on Aegis 7. I understand communications went down shortly after their arrival. You were part of the repair mission. A mission for which you volunteered, am I right? What did you find aboard that ship, Isaac? I found something. What did they find aboard the ship, Isaac? The marker. Did you have contact with this marker? It made you see things, didn't it? Things you didn't want to see. It spoke to me. What did it say, Isaac? What did it say to you, Isaac? Isaac! Isaac, can you hear me, Isaac? You just gotta love it, don't you? Isaac. Isaac, can you hear me? Dana, I found Isaac Clark. Now look Repeat behind him. him. Great work, Franco. Be careful. He's been out a long time. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good, good. Steady, steady, steady. We gotta get you out of this straitjacket. Where, where am I? All right, I, I know you're confused right now. But I can explain everything, but you gotta trust me, okay? Listen, you're in terrible, terrible danger. You don't say! <laughs> I love it. Watch his face, watch it closely. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's not right. Franco? Franco, what happened? Oh god. Now look around. How he even got in over to me with without being murderified is beyond me! Uh, excuse me, excuse me, coming through, excuse me. No, 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 none of that. Uh, Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, uh, uh, no, 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 no. And super obvious grab. Oh god, E, spam it. Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> so yeah, you might be asking yourself, what the hell is going on? Uh, at the end of the previous Dead Space game, Isaac Clarke had successfully escaped from, uh, well, the USG Ishimura. Ooh, we just heard somebody go flatline. <laughs> ah! <laughs> flatline in here. Honestly, it's probably better than waiting in here terrified. Uh, anyway, yes, previous game. I'm not sure I showed this. USG Ishimura, Isaac Clarke went to repair it, as they said in that little scene. He went and found out that, uh, yeah, they had found a marker, a symbol, something, well, not to Altman, but to, uh, something greater, something pure, something wonderful. And it drove everybody a little bit insane, and after they did some mining on a planet, next thing you know, well, it didn't just make people go insane, it brought back the dead, it made them ascend, it made them evolve into something better, something pure. Which sort of, well, wiped out everybody on the colony down below, and then eventually up on the ship. In some other games, you even find out that it got onto the ship when some other people tried to escape the colony down below. Those who escaped the planet fled to the safety of the orbiting Ishimura. This is Shuttle CSO-4. The colony's the scourge released upon Aegis 7 came with them. And uh, yeah, wiped out the entire USG Ishimura crew except for a few little scragglers that you, know, you get the lucky chance of seeing die every now and again, or even talking to. After getting your head around this, stopping the ship from crashing to the planet, you finally go ahead and, uh, well, save the day by taking the marker from the ship back down to the planet where they found it, stopping all the craziness. 
unfortunate. But then, long and behold, here comes lovely Kendra Daniels, who had betrayed you and you thought, you know, maybe just been lost. Uh, nope, she goes ahead, steals it back, and everything goes to pot after all. The USG Ishimura lets go of the payload, crashing the planet, but you luckily stop Kendra from getting away with the marker, and you yourself escape. So how did you end up in this pickle here in a straitjacket? After going ahead and starting to see your horrible dead girlfriend, now not so friendly as she was in the first game, you go ahead and stick yourself in cryosleep, finally are picked up by a recovery crew, and, uh, well, unfortunately for you, they take you back to a colony and don't exactly wake you up to rehabilitate you, but they ask you what the marker is. Where did it come from? Why do you have bits of it in your head? Not literally, but mentally. And how can they recreate it? This was the original purpose of your Mrs. Bossy Betrayer lass, Kendra Daniels, from the first game. She was for the military. She was going to take it back. That's why that ship, the Valiant, was there in the first place, is they, if she had failed to get a hold of the marker and bring it back, they would show up to be her backup. Anyway, Back to Dead Space 2, and uh, we got ourselves a save point here. Hello! So you can see I got my other saves here. We're going to do... Uh, this one. Save slot 4. Ta-da! Happy days. Alright. And so, uh, somebody lost a leg. Almost looks like a military. Poppy poppy doors. Now, I love the medical areas in here. Also, first time I played this, went running straight at those guys. Because, of course, I didn't know anything and just thought, oh my god, please help me, bad shit. Oh, yeah! And oddly enough, the first time I played this, I didn't even realize they were trying to shoot me. I heard them yell something, I wasn't sure what, what the heck, did there's something behind me? I think I missed the second one die because I was too busy looking behind me and then looking back. Yeah. I didn't realize they actually called my name and tried to shoot me. Devs probably intended for you to pretty quickly figure hmm, figure out that you're not going to get much help from the police. That said, it wasn't in my nature to run from them, and ever, whenever I thought I'd even get a chance to see somebody, I'd run towards them screaming for help. Alrighty, uh... Even though that pretty clearly says I should probably be annihilated. Yeah, don't worry, there weren't too many chances for police to come up and actually help you in this game, even if they were on your side. <laughs> Galactic Medicine. What an interesting binder. Alright, so, by the way, once again, beautiful art of this place. The first time I played this was a long time ago, before my back surgery, so I was still afraid of hospitals. But even then, you have to appreciate the overall art design. Even this game has aged a bit still love the angular design of all the doors and the roofs and ceilings and even if they have these panels that can be clearly knocked out it's still awesome secure area i'm assuming it says uh, absolutely no patience beyond this point yeah, well guess what a patient's just gotten out and for some reason they didn't put a tracking device in my head for shame anyway this is a if you don't know a unitologist um well, government-run area where they take people who have come in contact with the marker or markers, and they go ahead and experiment on them, as I said, to sort of get the marker designs out of their head. That way they could uh, make their own ones, or at least, very least, understand it. Let's see. Today, yes, don't you think? It hurts. It still hurts. Yes, I'll schedule you for another session tomorrow. No, no, no I, I don't think I'm ready. I, I don't think I can take another session. I don't... There. First thing tomorrow. Now let's talk about what you saw today. Come on, Strauss. I'm here to help you. It was black. Deep black and glowing red with symbols. Symbols whispered to me. And what did the symbols whisper to you? Come on, Strauss. What? It was just sharp. It was just sharp, but I put so much stuff in my head, so much shit in my head. There's no more room for anything. 
I can't remember what he looks like. I can't remember. <laughs> the symbols, Strauss. What did the symbols tell you? They told me that it wasn't my fault. I didn't kill him. They didn't deserve this, and I didn't deserve this. <laughs> Fucker. Put Mr. Strauss back in stasis, adjust his medication up 30 milligrams, and we'll try another session first thing in the morning. So yeah, there you go. Is Nolan Strauss. Your first encounter with Nolan Strauss, or at least his image. Look at that. Look. Oh, somebody. Yeah, that's nasty. Got a necromorph over there freaking out. I believe that's where we were earlier. Yep. Oh boy. People drawing markers out of their own fun times. So, do you want to see? Let's see this guy have eyes. He does. But anyway, you can see he's talking about uh, something wrong with his eye, something happened there, and obviously there's been a there's a fair few rooms about here, and bad shit's been happening. Let's see, anything else to interact with? I don't believe so. I love these containment rooms, though, and the fact that, you know, obviously the patients were down below, and they were all up above watching them. I thought there was more writing on the walls in some of these places, but apparently not. In fact, the room we were in when we first spawned is down there. If we run up and over... That's our room right there, I believe. The one with the red light above it. Either that or it's the one in the corner. Probably the one in the corner. But yeah, <laughs> that's where we were down there when we first started. It's pretty dang cool, actually. And again, I love the overall art design of this game so bloody much. Even if it has age. Anyway, let's continue. Now, Strauss... Same thing we heard earlier. That's Tideman. The, uh... He doesn't just run this base, he runs the entire station. Let's go ahead and uh, open. There we go. Hello! And look at that, we actually get to run into a living person. Not as fast as the first game, but um... Considering the first game started out with a fair few living people on your ship, but uh... Well, uh, first living person that's actually been through something. Flashlight in that wall locker. You should grab them. Go ahead. Take it. I won't be needing it anymore. <laughs> won't let you turn around and look at them. Uh, sorry, we are full. Anything on the walls here? Uh, I can't really make that out right now. Oh, look. Pick stuff up. E. And look, your very first weapon. Oh, wait. Restore health. Teaching you Q. Is a flashlight now. I love this game. Don't do it. Can I just... Ah, it's gonna happen no matter what. Isaac, we're all gonna burn for what we did to you. That last little jump as the physics model takes over is a little unfortunate. But I love it. We're all going to burn for what we did to you. It's not just to you, though. It's to all the other patients, like I said earlier, who have had contact with the marker or similar things. Uh, Nolan Strauss, you'll notice when he was yelling, I started talking about before we walked in here, he actually went ahead and said it was only a chunk, a fragment, because he never came in contact with a full marker. It was just a small chunk, meaning in theory, little tiny pieces of a marker could even be implanting and transmitting things into your head. Not a big fan of that personally, but I love the idea that it doesn't take much, you know, maybe a second or two around when it might start getting into your noggin. I still cannot read that. Uh, maybe in post I will. Open sesame! 
these environments so much. I love the fact that there's glass over these cables and ah, it's beautiful. Oof. Clark! Isaac Clark, is that you? Who are you? My name is Dana. I'm the one trying to rescue you. Why? What's going on? You're suffering from a unique form of dementia, Isaac. Something you contracted on age seven. How do you know that? How do you know all this about me? Your dementia will kill you. But if you can get here, I can treat you and get you to safety. Why should I trust you? Because I'm not the one shooting at you. Fuck. Just follow the route I'm sending you. Now, it's actually thanks to her that you're free at all. Because what she doesn't tell you is that guy that whose face burst open at the beginning there. She's the one who sent him. I think they're actually family in some way. So she sent him to uh, <laughs> save us from this mess. Unfortunately, he got here a little bit late to uh, get us out before everything went completely wrong. And things obviously went, well, horribly wrong for him. Also, is that a texture scene? It's lined up the wall. Oh, what was that about? Alright, we're good. Never mind. Okay. Now watch the door. B for objective? I don't know. Oh, I love these environments. Door. <laughs> First time I played this, uh, I knew it was just a chair as it was rolling past, but still scared the ever-living shit out of me. Absolutely. Also, no loot from that. Oh, let's see. Are we going to start looting stuff already? Um, ooh. Oh, it's just my own shadow. Okay, cool. <laughs> Even though I've played it before, still getting spooked. All right. I love the layout here. I love the little windows. Uh, I love everything. I'm not sure which art style I like more, Dead Space 1 or Dead Space 2. Obviously, they have the same sort of overall art style. Yeah, I'm already aiming. But uh, one has a more clean look to it. That would be this game. Then the other is more industrial. And this doesn't have as much ribbing on everything. Even though it has a fair amount. Hello! <laughs> I love it. The fact that you see an area and then you go to an area. You see an area, then you go to an area. Uh, almost looks like my office. Almost. The mind. You see what they're doing with their hands there? That's the unitologist symbols. You'll be seeing that later, where they actually form their hands together to make the unitologist symbol. Uh, let's see. You can see other patients were using popsicles to uh, sort of build the marker, so it's getting in their head even in the simplest ways. Playing chess. Is there any secrets in this? I don't know. Maybe, but I'm not seeing any. Let's uh, walk around here. Pardon me. Thank you. Now, when I first played this, uh, as I mentioned, I was a jump, jumpy, jumpy bastard. If you've ever seen me play a game blind, I'm almost always a lot more scared. Uh, give me a cane. You know, really pick up the cane, use it as a weapon. Anyway, uh, yeah, that scared the ever living crap out of me. <laughs> it even got me to jump there. Right. Shame they couldn't keep this place secure, eh? Anyway, let's uh, hit the alarm button. Everything's in trouble. Somebody come and save us. No? Ah! An audio log. Tap. Orderly TPS report 1418. The recent realization that the popsicle sticks were being constructed into marker-like miniatures for over a year has led to a search of the unit for any other such phenomena. It appears widespread, with marker forms being made out of medication bottles, hypodermic needles, and even toiletry items like nail clippers and tweezers. The research teams have all been notified of the discovery. I love the idea that they'd been doing it for a year with the popsicle sticks, and then they noticed. Like, they were just saw like, things like that, and like, okay, what is it? It's obviously a marker. Maybe they weren't having as much success, maybe they weren't being given as many. But I love the idea that they also, you know, look, he started building a house, but after a while, it's it's in his mind. That's what's in his mind. It's replacing or overriding or compressing everything else. So he starts building just on top of it, the marker. It's pretty incredible. Also, a thing to note is that the one woman did say that your dementia would eventually kill you, and you need to get to her. For one, she's already saved your ass once. For two, that sounds pretty dangerous, so <laughs> in theory, 
you don't got anything else to do, follow the leader. All right, so let's see. Uh, clear game. We're going to go with... Yep, yeah, right there. That'll do. Except, shame it's all the way down there. I wish there would be the latest game at the top. Let's keep on going. Hey, look, we're in the showers. Oh, this looks like it was such a pleasant place to get scrubbed down. Of course, their patients, it's likely they were brought in here, hosed down. People would use, like, mop things and scrub them down. Like that uh, scene from 12 Monkeys. The joy. Since my footsteps are off. Did you see it there? The For a hell? second? I absolutely adore this game. Now, the thing is, I messed that up too. Uh, because I knew there was a shadow that comes walking. I couldn't remember where. I was like, I don't want to miss the shadow! So I actually ended up looking behind, but there was a shadow there. For a moment, of a spooky spookums coming up behind you. I love that, that after all these years, they never canceled your... Uh, security clearance so you can still come into these crawl spaces. As dangerous as they may be. Um, it's sort of like, oh look, you know the necromorphs go through the vents, so let's put you in the vents. Oh, it's horrifying. <laughs> and I think this is a super obvious drop fall right here, considering, well, yeah. Welcome to Robo Surgery. Isaac, what happened? Are you alright? Why are you helping me? If Tideman finds you, more people will die. Including me. Not if you follow my route. I don't like this. You don't have to like it. Just hurry before you get locked in. Okay, well, I'm not gonna lie, I forgot about this part. I'm horrified now. He's like, you forgot how scared he is. So, uh, stasis surgical thing clearly gone horribly wrong. And clearly everything else has gone horribly wrong outside of it. Obviously, we need to deactivate it. Um,. Oh, look, seats don't watch the surgical ward as they experiment on people. Or just do surgeries and learn from it. I'm sure that's all they did here. Anyway, let's go ahead. Um, Yeah. More than just deactivate it. Stasis module! Alright, well now it gets real scary. Aim and press F. Look, the surgery arms fell off. I'm sure this won't at all be a problem. No! Okay, we've only broken the one, so we should be good, right? Ah, don't come through the window. And here's our first proper run in with Necro, so we can actually fight. But luckily, we're on easy difficulty, so that wasn't a painful experience, was it? Oh boy. Okay, it's also scrub ups. Get some loot, remember? Stop it! God. Remember, uh, stop to get loot from corpses and stuff. And also, if you stomp on a corpse, you can prevent it from coming back in theory. Uh, I do wish they'd still make a Dead Space game where you can go through a level, come back later, and if you stomp all the corpses, they will not have re come back to life. You'll still have fewer enemies to kill. That still has not happened, and it's unlikely. As uh, Visceral, the people that made this game, well, their studio got closed down by EA. So, that's fun, ain't it? Also, look at that thing. Its mouth split open, the gory mess forcing its way out of it. You can tell they refined their idea of what the Necromorph is a little bit more here. They still got the weird spiky arms coming out of their back, which is the way I remember it, but they also sometimes have the spikes coming out of their hands. It sort of depends. The legs weirdly deforming, like secondary legs forming. It's such a beautiful, horrifying, twisted thing. Of course, remember, in the first game, strategic dismemberment was one of the absolutely main sales points. They sort of said it's strategic dismemberment that's coming back in this game. Oops, sorry, chap. Uh, I didn't mean to grab that. I'm going to grab you. There we go. Uh, just to make sure you know you don't ever ascend. Uh, we're just going to do that, friend. There we go. Always feels good to be thorough. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, in this game, one of the things they sort of advertised was the idea that you could actually pull limbs off your arms, so if, or off your arm, off your enemies, and use them as weapons. So, if you upgrade your stasis module, which is what we got out of that surgery machine behind us, enough. Ooh, that music is getting to me good. Uh, you would actually be able to go ahead and just pull limbs off your enemies while they're alive, but you can also do what we're doing here, which is use a limb severed from an enemy. And carry it around. Oh, thank God. A health pack. I'll use that. Uh, boop, boop. And pick up the limb. There we go. It's not jittering, so I'm assuming this is just a level swap. Okay. Oh, spooky spookums. Spooky spookums. Eh. Ah! Ah, ah, ah. I can't see him. Where is he? Ah! That's a body! Ah! Oh no, I hit a wall with it. We're all dead. We're all gonna die. Oh good, I can knock it over. Come here, body! Knock it over again! Run! <laughs> this fucked us. This just fucked us. That didn't help us at all. Ah! No! Oh. <sighs> See, the thing is in my memory. There were not two of them. There were more like six of them. So my memory is not what it used to be, I guess. Which is bad. We're so dead. We are so dead. Can we make it past this? No. Shit. Anyway, we're above where we were. Uh, let's go over here. Oh, look, more spiky things. And more enemies. Oh, more enemies. I hear bad sounds. <gasps> Don't raise your hand at me. Okay. I love a uh, hospital clothing and equipment. It always looks so cool. <sighs> anyway, obviously, uh, yeah, that scares the shit out of me. I don't think you're dead. So we're just gonna do this, friend. Now I think you might actually be dead. Ah. Uh, so that was the game trying to tell you to press spacebar to loot stuff. <laughs> Obviously, ooh, wow. That's a good trick, ain't it? Hey, crack you, okay. Love live shadows. Let's also break the box, get the loots out of that. Cheers. What do we got for the eye? So the eye is connected to the eye bone. The eye bone's connected to the mock bone. The mock bone's connected to the alt and bone. Alt and bone makes you scream. You're not gonna grab me now, are you? I mean, you can still grab him, he's got one arm, right? In the in theory, through the lore, uh, Necromorphs can only be killed once they're pretty much chopped into tiny little pieces because every little bit of them is sort of alive. Wait, can we... Not alone for long, friend! I'll help you! As soon as I find the severed limb! Ha ha! I'll make it safe. Who's out there? Imagine being that guy. You were probably sedated while you were in surgery, but suddenly you wake up, there's no doctors, there's nobody anywhere, and you just hear horrible freaking sounds. Not to mention that thing. Which that didn't kill. Oh, I just remembered, I think. You can't kill this thing. It's there to prevent you from getting to the next door until you actually get the weapon. Crap. <laughs> I, I, uh... This area is a little bit less friendly than some of the other surgical stuff. Oh, I can't pick that up yet. Let's see. That looks like a growth. That's a V for Visceral. That was their icon, if you don't know. Visceral Studios. They will be missed. They lost their way, but still. Little mini surgery ward. 
That's amazing how easily I can just ignore that guy screaming. Uh, hey, bud. Yep. Now the question is, was he a patient of the psych ward or just the normal hospital? Because even though we were going through the crazy psych ward, by the way, I love this environment. Um, we are still in the normal hospital. Oh my god, please help me. You! You! Thank god! Please, come help me! Yeah, luckily, uh, it's not through your sternum, I don't think, so Jesus, hopefully it's man. just skin. Help me! Hopefully. Would you fucking help me? But yeah, you, I don't know how to do stitches. You're on your own. But what I will do... You! You! <laughs> Thank God! Please, <sighs> come help me! See, I know what's coming. You don't get to save him. Stop surgical cutter. Uh, surgical you. tissue incision you. in progress, but Thank it seems God. to have stopped. Please, calm down. Me. I'll cut you out of there. Is that a tissue laser? A plasma cutter? And oh game God. over. Fuck. What the fuck are you oh, doing? Shit. Help. I'm trying. Guys, brave as shit. I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah, and you can't save him. There's no saving him. Okay, let's see. C. What was it? What was the button to switch it? Come on, boss man. I can't remember. No leg for you. Strategic dismemberment at its best. Fracking. Love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, remember, stop it out. Spacebar changes it. Got you. And anyone else out here? Huh? Anybody? Spooky spookums? No? We're good? We're good. I love the fact that that glass broke. Excuse me one second, please. Thank you very much. Here we go. Try to conserve a little ammo. How about that? I missed. Actually, I'm not sure I missed. Like I said, I think it might make it so you can't actually damage it with anything else. Yeah, you see its arm didn't pop off. This is designed to stop you from getting to that door. Hey, by the way, uh... Thank you for the loot. Much appreciated. Alright. So goodbye, fair surgical ward. Um, yeah. As much as I do like hospitals nowadays, still would hate to wake up mid-surgery. Especially on whatever surgery that guy was having, having his chest chopped open. Isaac, it's That's Dana. not cool. You have to dismember the creatures to stop them. I know. I know. <laughs> I've had a lot of practice. Just try to stay in one piece. Thanks. So I like the way that, you know, they tell you again right there. It's pretty quick, though. Ooh, what were you doing? Ice? That looks like circuitry being installed in people. That looks like necromorphic mutations. Sometimes they inject people with, like, necrotic necromorph tissue to try to cause mutations, I believe. Looks like somebody was in the middle of washing their hands when shit went down! <laughs> Again, I do wish they had a Dead Space game where you could do strategic dismemberment and then come back to later's level. Later's. Later's level? levels later and find fewer baddies because of your thorough actions. Kind of like a prey, actually. Where if you were thorough in that, you might actually end up with uh, enemies only spawning in one area. Like when I stacked up a bunch of bodies. If you watch my stream in general, it should be on there, I believe. Proximity sensor reset. Look how many more bodies there are, machine. Revive them, please. Watch your aim, please. Bunch of bodies I stacked up, and all the enemies would respawn every time I came back only from that room. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, save right here. I think that's been long enough for the first episode of our return to uh, Altman's Paradise, Dead Space. Yeah, right there. Hope you guys are enjoying, and uh, yeah, we're gonna continue this. Who knows how long it'll take for me to get through it. Like I've said in another video, I got an IRL job thingy now because Sage needs money for pills and puppy pills and medical stuffs. As well as, of course, you know, shiny spaceships and Star Citizen and um, technology. Anyway, that is it. Thanks a bunch for watching. Hope you're enjoying. And uh, yeah, Altman's got a voice now. Wait, no. Isaac's got a voice. Altman always had a voice till the government killed him. Anyway, that's it. Bye!
God, I love the way this game looks.